A very warm welcome to the Ardos presentation, One Tool Chain Fits All Sensors. My name is Andreas Patzer and I'm working for Vector since 2003 in the product line measurement and calibration. I want to show you how you can make your life easy, your work easy in the vehicle. It's about technology, it's about organizational stuff, it's about legislator stuff. Imagine this is your vehicle. With a multi-supplier, multi-sensor vehicle, you may have a front radar, corner radars, you may have surround cams, a front cam, a rear cam, side leaders, whatever, and maybe you have a fusion ECU. All these sensors were delivered by different suppliers, usually. And uh, every supplier has its own logging system for his sensor. So imagine you may have a situation like this, that you have multiple logging systems in the same vehicle. You have some problems with that. So time synchronization, triggering, start, stopping mechanisms are very complex to handle over multiple loggers. So I want to show you how to make the life easier with destroying the loggers inside and use just one logger for everything. Then you have no problem with time synchronization anymore. You have no problems with all these mechanisms of starting, stop, stopping and triggering. There are multiple things to talk about. Let's start with the software. Spoiler alarm, please. For everybody who does not know, Canopy is the name of our software that we are using in the vehicle. And we have a strong belief in the product line, your project success must not depend on our development cycle. So we decided to develop an own interface for your sensors, for your own protocols, and we called it DHPR. DHPR stands for Distributed High Performance Recorder. It works that way. You have your PC, you have your canopy installed with all the recorders inside, with the access to the bus systems and stuff like that. And you may have additional DHPRs. Every DHPR has the contact to the special sensor. And Canopy's configurating and time uh, takes care about the time synchronization between Canopy and the DHPRs. And because of the fact that the DHPR is connected via IP to Canopy, you can use it on another PC as well. Just connect both PCs with Ethernet. And then we have a complete scalable solution with two or more PCs. Your project scheduling is completely independent from the Canopy development cycle. And if you're using multiple PCs in one vehicle, you just need one Canopy license. I want to explain the DHPR a little bit more in detail and I take the example of a mobile eye logging setup. I will talk about this hardware a little bit later. Let's focus on the camera system. The camera system has multiple interfaces for the video frames and FPD link, for the detected objects and can FD interface and uh, for the debugging data we have an Ethernet interface. The hardware puts everything together and transmit it via Ethernet to the PC. The DHPR took everything um, and, and uh, analyzes and is doing some stuff and storing the necessary data on the PC. When you set up a logging hardware and logging system in your vehicle, you must be sure that your sensors are working correctly. So it's necessary to verify what is the sensor sending. And in Canopy, we have multiple windows to show the special sensor uh, information. Like, for example, here, uh, you have the window for the LiDAR information. Here, you have the, inf uh, the information of the radar system. Here, for example, a video with uh, lane detection. 
So just set up your complete tool chain in your vehicle and you can uh, see on the windows in Canopy that everything is up and running. Okay, let's talk about a little bit the Ardos logging hardware. We have a complete new hardware platform. It's called VP and uh, we have two PCs. One is the VP7400, the other is the VP6400. Both are industry PCs and can be used in vehicles and they are different in many cases. But I think one, one thing is uh, very important, it's about the data rate. The VP7400 has a data rate of about one gigabyte per second and the VP6000 is about um, 500 megabyte per second. So these are the two hardware platforms that you can use in the ADAS context in the vehicle. At least you need bus interfaces, CANFD, FlexRay, all this kind of stuff. And I strongly believe that you know that uh, Vector has uh, all these hardware interfaces for the well-known buses, FlexRay, CANFD and all these things. So just have a small look at the Ethernet interfaces. Here you can see on the picture some of the interfaces and uh, there are much more. But please keep in mind when you, uh, when you try to select the right hardware for the vehicle, please take care that the hardware is built and designed for the usage in the vehicle. Uh, we have something that is called tap mode because we have to interrupt the automotive Ethernet line when we want to measure it. And not every hardware is built for this scenario in the vehicle. Um, so keep in mind what you select and for all the other questions about the Ethernet hardware, you can visit our Ethernet booth as well. How to connect ECU sensors and Fusion ECU to the measurement hardware. That's this point. But before that, I want to give you a small overview about possible um, sensors and networks um, and components that we can use. So, for example, you may have radar, you may have LIDAR, or you need surround cams, uh, you have a vehicle camera, you have a fusion easy use, you have analog things like voltage, uh, you need ground truth information uh, or the positioning, um, you have access to all the vehicle networks and maybe you need other sensors like for example for brightness. All these things can put together in Canopy and connect it to the hardware. I want to explain uh, with the radar system how to connect the radar system with the measurement hardware. You have the radar ECU and you have canopy and the connection between is that inside your radar ECU you have the radar sensor, you have your microcontroller, you have your memory and all these kind of stuff and we put in a plug on device, a pot. A pot from the family VX1000, that's the name of the product family. And this pot is connected to the debugging and trace interface, for example, of the uh, controller. And uh, it takes all these data on a serial line and send them to the base module, the VX1000 base module. And the base module itself takes the data, change the structure of the data and send it to Canopy. In that case, we have access via XCP on the controller algorithms, like for example for the FFT, or you have access to the raw data, the radar raw data that you need in the back end for the re-simulation. Another example is a Fusion ECU. A Fusion ECU is much more complex than a traditional ECU because you have the controller plus processor inside. But well at the end the situation and the solution is the same. We put in a VX1000 pod, we transmit all the data to a base module and the base module sends the data to Canopy. 
You have seen this picture, this hardware, in the context of the mobile eye DHPR. And uh, this hardware is a new base module for the VX1000 family. It is flexible because you have multiple interfaces. So, for example, we have interfaces for all the pots that we have. You can, <coughs> sorry, uh, you can connect CANFD, you can connect FlexRay interfaces to it, and video interfaces for FPD Link and GMSL. The hardware can be connected via 2 times 10 gigabit to the host PC, or you can use these 10 gigabit interfaces for cascading these systems. There's uh, much um, power inside. We have a powerful software um, system on, the, uh, on chip to um, realize add-on features like, for example, video compression and additional Ethernet ports for connecting additional measurement devices. And one important thing is the time synchronization at all, for sure, it's the vector hardware synchronization inside, but you can always also use IEEE 1588 mechanisms. I want to show you one additional feature that we realize on this hardware on the next slide. Imagine you have an, a very complex uh, and uh, high-end solution in your vehicle and you need a lot of power to store all the data. So we decided to organize a kind of stream-based logging situation. So you have uh, your sensors here. You can connect them to the, VN, uh, to the VX1161. And the data is not transmitted to the host PC. It's directly streamed to the NAS, to the network area storage. So you just store all the binary data in this storage. And this is the fastest way that you can store data from sensors. And um, for, at least, uh, um, for sure, you need a kind of post-processing because these are just binary data. But in the post-processing, you have normally all, uh, a lot of resources and uh, much more time. So this job is done later. Now, let's talk about the working process. We designed a new tool. It's called Canopy Log. And it's a combination of, of Canopy, the software, and the PC hardware that I have shown you before, the VP family, 7400 and 6400. It's robust, it's easy to use, it's built for vehicles. And it handles everything standalone. Put in the canopy lock into the vehicle, connect everything that you want to connect, and then you can use this complete system standalone, or you may use canopy or a mobile UI just to get an impression what's going on on the canopy lock system. We call this a two-in-one use case. We have an interactive mode here, and we have a standalone mode. So imagine in the interactive mode, <clears throat> Your specialist takes his laptop, connect via Ethernet to the canopy log, and has complete access to everything that is connected to canopy. You can flash easy use, you can calibrate parameters, you can change your calibration, you can change your measurement stuff. Everything is possible from this point of view. Then you close canopy, everything is stored on the canopy log and canopy lock is up and running in an automatic way. But in a standalone mode, the driver wants to see, is everything OK? Is enough space on my disk? And this kind of status information you can have on your mobile UI, for example, on your smartphone. And this is not very comfortable. It's also um, it brings a lot of process reliability because you have not to change anything in the cabling stuff. You just connect it one time to the canopy lock. And even if you want to change, you come as an expert with your laptop, you have nothing to change in the cabling system. 
And the configuration of canopy and the configuration of the canopy lock is identical. There is no uh, thing to do between. It's the same. So no place, no time for errors. Another thing about the working process is, imagine you store a lot of data in your vehicle. And then at the end of the day, you want to get these data out. Um, with our solution, it is easy to remove the disk, put in an empty disk, and you can start your test drive in a minute. The disk with the data on it uh, can be copied via a copy station, for example, and transferred to a station where, um, that has enough um, possibilities to store the data at the back end in the cloud system. So very easy to handle in the vehicle and um, very comfortable at the end. The last thing I want to keep in mind is the legislator rules. We have to anonymize the license plates and the faces. So if you want to do this manually by humans, this might be a nightmare. So I just want to show you how you can do it by an um, AI system, artificial intelligence system. So here you have the original image frame. You can see the license plate. Um, the uh, AI is um, uh, the algorithm of the AI detects the place uh, the plate located and uh, clipped it out, and uh, can refill it with random numbers. Something similar can be done for faces, but this is not just a product. Uh, I think we have to discuss in, in a deep way how to use it, and uh, then I'm sure we will find a solution for you. That brings me to the end of the presentation and to the summary. So put in your canopy lock into the vehicle, connect everything. You have your contact to the GNSS, IMU system, you get uh, the UTC time support. Then you add, <coughs> sorry, then you add your uh, VX1161, the base modules for all the sensors and ECUs you need. At your buses with the VN hardware. We are uh, supporting the surround cams. And for physical quantities, you may use, for example, in this case, a CSM module for getting all the high voltage data. If the, spa if the speed uh, on the dis for the disks for storing the data here, the canopy lock isn't fast enough, so you can use the stream-based logging with the network area storage. You get the data out of the logging system quite easily with or without a post-processing copying process. So quite simple. Uh, you have a big process reliability and it's easy to handle. Now I'm at the end uh, of the presentation and I just want to remember you uh, please visit us at the Ardas booth as well. We have some demos there to show you. So thank you very much for your time and your interest. I'm looking forward to the question and answer session. Um, please visit us at our Ardas booth as well. And so let's start with the question and answer session.